Hi, I'm Dave Baring, Technical Director at TriStar, and welcome to another Tech Talk. Today we're going to talk about uh, how do plastic bearings self-lubricate? It's a question that comes up uh, pretty frequently uh, because a lot of people who are not familiar with plastic plane bearings don't understand the concept. And uh, those are the people that we uh, are constantly battling with to not use lubrication because it defeats the purpose of a self-lubricating plastic. Now, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. There's two types of systems that are used um, that are, are recognized uh, as self-lubricating forms. Uh, the first one is called a smearing system. Smearing systems are the most efficient. Um, these are, are basically systems that utilize uh, lubricants that we're all familiar with, things like Teflon, PTFE, uh, graphite, moly, uh, different types of oils. Um, these are either in the form of the base polymer or they can be in the form of additives to other plastics. Smearing systems uh, function very efficiently because what you're doing is introducing microscopic particles uh, and the PTFEs are very, very uh, well known for doing this, but they'll actually generate a hydrodynamic film of PTFE and uh, we all know that PTFE is the most slippery material on the face of the planet, so it makes for a very good lubricant. Graphite, moly, and oils are also very good uh, forms of lubrication media in plastics. Um, little different forms of efficiency, but uh, they're all very good in their place in particular types of polymers. The other type of system is a debris system. Um, these can uh, be a little bit less efficient in terms of how they deposit their lubrication, but uh, what they are essentially doing is breaking off little small particles of the polymer and in fact generating little ball bearings, if you will. Uh, what we're doing there is, is, is building this little uh, bed of particulate that becomes the self-lubricating media. Um, Again, it tends to be a little less efficient, uh, but the materials that are classified as debris systems are materials that are extremely durable. This would be things like cast nylons and UHMW and, and materials that are very tough and, and rugged. So let's talk a little bit about the PTFE type systems because that is predominant. Um, materials like Rulon, uh, Fluorescent, Ultraflon, uh, these are materials that are essentially PTFE first uh, with different additives and those additives as we've talked about in other uh, tech talks those additives are what give that PTFE its ability to resist cold flow to enhance wear properties to enhance electrical properties and enhance thermal properties all that comes into play but the bottom line is the PTFE is the key component there and as the lubricant um, there's a lot of other forms of uh, that the PTFE lubrication comes in and that can be in things like Delrin AF. Uh, Delrin AF is a, an acetyl material that has PTFE added to it. So again you have that that component which is the primary lubrication factor. Uh, other materials like Erlite TX, Hydex 4101L, uh, these are materials that are using again migratory lubricants um, to enhance their wear properties, enhance their frictional properties. Um, the, other, the other type of system, again, is the debris system. Things like UHMW. Uh, UHMW is kind of unique in that the polymer itself has very, very good frictional properties and wear properties. Um, so you don't necessarily have to put lubrication into UHMW to make it an efficient uh, self-lube system. But there are UHMWs now that have additives like molly, uh, glass beads, uh, silicon oil, a lot of different additives that have been put in now to again enhance the performance of those materials. That, that makes these types of materials like the nylatrons and the UHMWs a combination. It can be a debris system along with a migratory lubricant. So kind of the best of both worlds. But each material has, each type of debris uh, or of lubrication system um, has its own efficiencies, uh, has its own place. Um, again, it, you kind of look at it uh, in terms of whether you need finesse or you need ruggedness. Um, either way, both systems are very well 
uh, received in the marketplace. Um, these materials do not require, nor do we like to introduce lubrication because when you introduce lubrication to a plastic bearing, you're basically introducing a lapping compound because it doesn't take very long for that lube, whether it's a light oil or grease, to pick up debris, dirt, things like that, and that turns into a lapping compound, and before you know it, you've worn out that bearing and probably scored up the shaft pretty well too. So these materials are designed to be self-lubricating, and that's what they need to be considered uh, primarily as. Um, so if you have any questions about how either one of these techniques work, uh, it's pretty basic, um, but we are more than happy to answer any questions you have on it and uh, work with you on selecting the right material, um, the right type of lube system for your application. Uh, all the things that we've talked about in previous Tech Talks uh, when it comes to plane bearing design uh, also come into play here uh, when we talk about the types of lube systems we want to use. Um, you know, speeds, loads, temperatures, all of these things come into play. Um, so please feel free to give us a call at uh, TriStar Engineering or contact us through Ask the Expert on our website. Uh, we'll be happy to work with you on uh, product selection to be sure that the lube system that we're uh, suggesting is going to be the best one for your application. Thanks again for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again.